The major question regarding the Super Mario 3D World port to Switch was just what the new Bowser's Fury mode was going to be. Very little was shown except a seemingly larger area to run around in and a darker tone. But Nintendo's new trailer highlighting the mode has finally provided some insight on what to expect, and it is amazing. A wide open world more reminiscent of Sunshine or Odyssey, gorgeous visuals, and Godzilla Bowser. I've already seen a lot of talk regarding this trailer pointing out all the cat-themed enemies, from Goombas to Conkdoors to Piranha Plants, and even the normal cats surrounding Mario being the same colors as Luigi, Peach, Toad, and Rosalina from the main game. But I haven't seen anyone talk about the structure of the mode, something I think is revealed in the trailer itself. Allow me to explain in this more focused deep dive into the Bowser's Fury gameplay trailer. I believe the structure is hinted at as soon as the trailer begins, with a focus on the giant cat bell that's covered in the same black, spiky substance that Bowser is later seen in. But more importantly, the bell breaks free of that substance thanks to four beams of light. Those beams are likely Mario's goal in the mode, with the cat bell itself serving as something of a hub. The world can be freely explored, but there are four distinct paths to actually reach the goals and activate the beams of light. Those paths are where the more structured 3D world-like level design comes into play, creating a hybrid of 3D world and open world gameplay. Before moving on, I do want to mention that a lighthouse can be spotted quite clearly in this opening scene and is the entire reason I had this theory to begin with. Strangely though, there's no light coming from it to the bell itself, but it has to be connected as the next scene shows a wide open view of this new world. Mario is standing on a lighthouse, and in the distance, three more can be seen covered in the black substance. Freeing them from that substance has to be how the cat bell is released. And like I said before, the cat bell serves as a central hub where pieces of land can be reached and 3D World style obstacles have to be traversed. There are a few oddities though. There's no land to the west of the bell, and there's a seemingly massive track that stretches from the far left of the world behind Bowser's prison, and all the way to the right side where spinning platforms can be seen. Perhaps this course is focused on Plessy, though it may also serve as a faster way for Mario to travel across the water and find secrets. There are two rocks or crates in the water on the far right, but those may be part of a later scene where a line of rocks clearly creates a race course for Plessy to travel through. Before moving on though, I do want to point out the massive castle in the background as it stands out amongst the other structures. We even get a slightly better look at it while riding Plessy later on, as it has a windmill attached to it, and there's even another floating island just ahead. But this is indeed another level section, with Mario even platforming on the windmill itself amongst the snow. And hey, it's even possible to see Plessy way down in the water too. The next scene I want to highlight is when Mario is climbing and jumping between grates. He grabs a new cat coin, but it's difficult to say what it's actually used for. I can't imagine a story purpose, though I do wonder if there's a cosmetic one. After all, there is that later scene with the other cats, and everything in this world has been catified. Maybe finding and collecting these cat coins allows Mario to turn those cats back into the other playable characters, allowing Luigi, Peach, Toad, and Rosalina to be playable. A later scene when Mario is using the Tanuki power even shows a cat coin near those colored cats. Again, it's a pure shot in the dark guess, but it at least provides some reason to collect the coins. Maybe they're even spent at this calico cat that's seen in the next clip, who looks quite sad. However, there's no indication it's a shop, and could simply be an NPC asking Mario for help. It's also quite noticeable that the black substance has completely taken over most of the sea, something not apparent in the scene before. This could point to the possibility that rather than the lighthouses themselves breaking the cat bell free, they instead push back the substance, allowing the next section of the world to be played. Either method of traveling through the world could work, but there's not quite enough evidence to say which it is for sure. The next clip I want to highlight is the one where a cat shine is placed behind an invisible wall. These are quite obviously the main goals of the mode that help Mario progress. Whether they light the lighthouses which clears the blackness or simply do that on their own is impossible to say, but it does offer more context to the structure of Bowser's Fury. But there's one more piece to the puzzle that needs to be talked about, and that's Bowser himself. At the end of the trailer, it shows how the black substance grows more and more threatening as it coalesces around Bowser, creating something of a timer. 
I highly doubt it's actually timed, but each cat shine that Mario collects ticks down to the moment of Bowser's awakening. Now, there's several interesting aspects to this awakening. One is the fact that there are still some lighthouses covered in the dark substance in the background when he arrives, indicating that he's a presence for quite some time, or that not all lighthouses are necessary to complete the mode. Second is that when Mario is dodging the raining fire and rising pillars, he is in the same area where he was jumping between grates that I spoke of during the cat coins. This could lend credence to the idea that the sections of the world can be tackled in any order, meaning the final run toward the giant cat bell has a unique layout depending on when you do what. It's hard to say for sure, but that would potentially increase the replayability of a mode that seems like it will only be a few hours long at most. As a quick aside, the trees and bushes have cat ears too. Also, evil kittens appear when Bowser awakens and are likely the corrupt versions of the colored cats from before, a likely mark against my other playable characters theory. But it's also possible that they just start appearing. I'll just have to wait and see if I'm actually right. In either case, it all ends off in a showdown between Mega Fury Bowser, or God Slayer Bowser in Japan, which is just so metal, and Golden Lion Mario, who looks decidedly Super Saiyan. Anime, Kaiju, and Mario. What a combination. And really, that's why it's hard not to be excited for this new mode. It's a mixture of 3D World's assets with a bigger world, potentially creating the first time that open exploration Mario gameplay and 2D style power-up gameplay really mixes in a single game. Perhaps it'll lead to something more? Either way, it won't be long until we all get to try the port of Super Mario 3D World along with Bowser's Fury. Let me know what you think of my theories in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this deep dive into the Bowser's Fury gameplay trailer, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash gvgaming so we can create more videos like this in the future. All of your support truly means the world, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you on Good Vibes Gaming next time. Bye!